Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Tanker. I'm Chad Lachance, and I appreciate you joining us. Now, you have caught me sitting on the side of Bel Air Lake, and that's almost irrelevant. The only reason I bothered to tell you that is to set the stage of where we are. This is a put and take trout lake. It's a lake that's slam full of stocker trout, and it's a great place to come for just a quick and easy fishing trip. And that's why we're here because today's whole episode is about fishing with power bait for trout. Now, hardcore Fishful Thinker fans are gonna say, oh man, what are we doing? We don't bait fish, we don't do that, we throw lures, that's what we do here at Fishful Thinker. Well, that's okay, because the way we're gonna work our power bait today, I think is gonna be surprising to you guys. I learned it from some Europeans, that, that take power baiting to a whole nother level. We are not gonna sit here with bait on the bottom waiting for fish to come to us. You'll see how it's gonna go. So stay tuned, get comfortable. I think it's gonna be a unique show. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. The gentleman that, that manages power bait, as far as the production and marketing of power bait for all of Berkeley, reached out to me and said, hey, you live in Colorado where there's lots and lots of trout. How many of your people retrieve power bait? And I started asking around, including on our Facebook page, and basically I found zero. I didn't find anybody that casts and retrieves power bait. Everybody lets it float under a bobber, they let it float up under the bottom, sometimes they drift it in the current, but nobody was molding it into shapes and retrieving it in a couple weeks worth of research I did. So I got a hold of the European pros, there's literally power bait pros in Europe that are, are devoted to this stuff, and said, how do I do it? What, what are the nuances? What do I need to know? How do I need to do this to catch some of these trout? in our country, and the first thing they said was you need to build action into the bait. The beauty of power bait is that it is moldable because I can make a big ball. This is what you guys are used to. You guys are used to a big round ball like that, okay? And you put it on sometimes a small treble hook is very common. The little snelled hooks you guys see very common as well with the line coming off them and the bait holder, little barbs on the back of them, very common as well. But this has basically minimal to no action at all if I retrieve it through the water, just sort of wobbles around but if I make it long and skinny and put a skinny tail on one end of it now I have a tadpole looking thing well now I have something that actually will have some action when I retrieve it in the water and if I want it to spin all I've got to do is offset it to one side and give it a healthy bend in it so that it's kind of an L shape now it will spin like mad when you retrieve it through the water column this thing will constantly spiral in the same way that an inline spinner will spiral when you retrieve it through the water column really, really important because I'm generating action and also a certain amount of buoyancy with it. By retrieving it, it's got resistance in the water. Another shape that the European guys taught me about, they'll give it a, a distinct twist, a real gentle twist to it. Now it'll spin really fast underwater. And again, I can generate bites with it. The other thing that they do is generate some of the shapes that just wobble as you retrieve it through the water column. All right, so I'm gonna get two little hunks of this power bait, okay? And it looks like pretty big pieces. And actually, those, that might be a little bit too much here. I'll put some of that back. And I'm gonna roll them up and get them in a little ball, okay? So you guys are probably familiar with the little power bait balls like that. And I'm gonna take my hook, which is right here, give myself a little bit more line here. And I'm gonna take this single hook and I'm gonna pinch these together, one on either side of the hook and I'm gonna just keep pinching on them until they get a good bind on each other and the hook itself. And I'm covering the whole shank of the hook. And in so doing, it gives this power bait something to hold on to, for one. And I'll just keep working it until I get it to where it's really bound good. I'm not doing any of the crazy twist moves or anything just yet. I'm just getting the, the bait on here where it's really bound on to, all the way up to the eye of the hook and I'll help hold the bait on the, on the hook when I do that. And you know, a lot of guys use treble hooks, but I'm not a big fan of trebles for, for this type of a situation because I don't want the excess hooking. I don't need the excess hooking. I'm retrieving the bait. And the Europeans taught me that I don't need to have uh, is nearly that much hook, th those many hook points on it. So then I'll get it, now that I've got it bound on the hook, now you can see the entire hook is covered in power bait. There's two different colors. Now I keep flattening it, keep flattening it, keep flattening it. 
And by flattening it out, I'm gonna make it create its own motion in the water, kind of like a spoon. So I'm gonna flatten it all the way out on here. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. Get it all molded out, give it a little twist. So now I have this. And basically when I retrieve it, it's going to spin in the water column like this. And that will draw fish, or at least that's the theory. So set this over here. We're gonna take this and gently throw it out here and let it sink just a tiny bit. And then I'll just start retrieving it and we'll see what happens. As it comes through the water, you can see it wobbling back and forth. And as you fine tune your shapes, you can make it do different things. Now I might need a little bit of weight on here because that's a big piece of power bait. And so I might need to go ahead and put a little bit of weight on there because power bait does float. But you can see the action it's getting coming through the water depending on how I retrieve it. And so now I've got a, oop, I got a refusal, but I can kill it because it's power bait and he'll probably come and eat it anyway. And that's too big of a piece. So what that fish just told me is my bait is too big. And you can see he got a hold of it. So that's no problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten it out, make it longer and skinnier. And I bet you we can get him to bite it just by modifying the size of my bait. I'm gonna give this one a twist for the colors. Now my little spoon is back in action. Let's try it again. Trout love the action, and because of that, it's well known they love the smell and the flavor, but it's that retrieve speed and action that really gets a lot of fish to bite. And the thing about trout is they live in clear water environments just like here at Bel Air today. They get a good chance to look at stuff. The trout are gonna come up and look at the bait when it's static and not bite it. But when I retrieve it, they will grab it on a much higher uh, percentage basis. And you can see that thing wobbling back and forth back there. So it's kind of got action like a spoon. And the swivel will keep it. Here comes, here comes one a little closer. Let's see if he grabs it. Oh, he looked at it. So I might have to make a different shape out of it. But that's the beauty of this is that I can make another shape out of it. And I can go slow or fast, just like you would. And just like that. <laughs> so the, the difference between the European techniques and Americans is, you know, we think of it, uh, we think of dough baits, power bait dough baits as a static retrieve or a static presentation, you know, where you just throw it out and you sit it there and you wait for a fish to come to you. But by doing this way, Two things happen. Maybe I should burn these guys out a little bit more before I bring them in on this super light rod. But two things happen. First of all, by me retrieving the bait, as you can see, it's hooked in the corner of the mouth and just like that, that fish is out of there. So I've got a single hook. See, I've just got a single hook. I've got no weight at all. And then I've got a swivel right here. And I'm putting just enough dough bait on here to give me the weight I need to cast it. We can see the fish are right at the surface. So I'm just retrieving the bait through the water column. And by retrieving it, they'll swim up and they'll bite it, but you're not gonna deep hook fish at all. And so I'm not keeping fish today. If we do deep hook one, I'll keep them, but that's not my intention. So by retrieving the bait, two things happen. I'm covering a lot more water for one. Two, I don't have any chance, really much of a chance of fish gut hooking. And then three, I can change my shape, my size, uh, my speed, all of those things to help me get more bites, just as I would with any other lure. So it's kind of a hybrid between bait fishing and lure fishing. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. 
The other thing that's important about Power Beige is it comes in so many colors and so many glitter and, and even metallic colors, silver and gold. And right here in the, in the throes of the coronavirus, I've had actually a hard time sourcing some of that stuff right this minute. But uh, as that gets better and better over time, uh, you'll find out that the shiny Power Bait is really popular for that, for that method as well. Uh, and it's the same thing. It's a combination of a spoon turned into power bait. It's just, I've always said if you're fishing with a spoon, you got to be real good with your hook sets because the fish won't hold the bait at all. Well, now you've got the opposite. Now I've got the effect of a spoon, a bait that's wobbling along through the water column like a spoon, but if he gets near it and tastes it, he's going to eat it. And most of these trout, if you see them, they'll just happily eat this stuff just about. So it's a very good way to basically bridge the gap between bait fishing and artificial lure fishing. So there's my shape, and if camera looks at that, I'll hold it real still. As far as I can tell, I'm not a European, but as far as I can tell, that's pretty close to what they call the ducky. And so if you watch, I'll just pitch it over here, and camera will watch it come through the water column right here. If I retrieve it, let it go down a little bit where I can retrieve it, and then if you watch it, as it comes along here, it spins all the way through there. So now I have effectively an inline spinner made out of power bait. No trout is going to swallow that because it's coming through the water column. I'm going to know when he bites it and when he does, I got him. And so it's a it's a basically a really really good way to mix lure fishing and bait fishing, which is why we wanted to share this with you because I did have the opportunity to deal with the Europeans and they saw a lot of power bait. And, oh, there's one and got that sucker. Yeah, they saw a lot of power bait in Europe and this is how they fish it. They don't put it under a bobber and just sit there and wait for a fish or sit on the bottom. And I haven't even seen this fish yet. Here he comes, but I'd be willing to bet when you get him over here, that hook is in the tip of his snout or the corner of his mouth, one or the other, and I am correct. It is right in the corner. Easy fish, easy fish, easy fish, easy. Hold still, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't, you're not into this, I get it, okay. There's the hook, guys, right in the corner. Just like that, hook's already out. Fish is no worse for the wear. Perfect little stalker trout. See you, buddy. I think that's pretty good illustration of the point right there. So by bending the various shapes, uh, the, and they have names, some of, them, some of them spin, some of them just wobble, depending on how they're bent. But by, by doing that, you can literally mix up no different than a guy mixing up his lures. On top of it, with the power bait, I can blend colors together, make a custom color pattern, something like that as well. But really, the, the, the sky is limitless. It's up to you as far as how big, how small, what shape, long, skinny, short, fat, whatever. It's all up to you. One of the best benefits I see to this whole thing is the fact that fish are not deep hooked. And that's the one knock anglers have had for years on power bait or worms or any other real bait that people are using. If you leave it static and you've got a heavy sinker to hold it there on the bottom where you want, the, you don't even know a fish got it until he's straight up yanking on it. And by then he's swallowed your bait. And then we found this thing laying on the side of the lake. It's a deep, it's for unhooking deep hooked fish. Completely irrelevant. We can throw that in the trash because we don't need that if we're going to retrieve our power bait. All I needed today to unhook anything was a pair of forceps and I actually never even used those. The whole day went by without me even having to use these because every fish we caught was hooked somewhere around the outside of the mouth, right in the corners of the mouth, around the jaw or the top of the mouth. So important because trout are fragile fish in the first place. The last thing I want to do is deep hook them if I'm not going to eat them. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Just wind it up behind him, guys. And, and so that fish followed it, followed it, followed it. And as, as I was watching him following it, as soon as he got up right up behind it, then I just killed it and let it start sinking straight down. And uh, as soon as it started doing that, um, then you end up with an immediate bite and a, and a fully committed bite at that. Okay, come here, fish. And if you look, even with this little fish, easy, you don't get me with the hooks. Even with this little fish, who I just watched do it, again, the hook is gonna come right out. We aren't worried about deep hooking the fish. If I can get a hold of it, it'll come right out. It's right there in the corner of his mouth. But we don't have to worry about deep hooking any of these fish come out of there. There we go. He'll be no worse for the wear. And 
my rig, guys, is very complicated, I want to point out. Right now I have a split shot, I have a swivel, and I have a single hook. And uh, I'm throwing it on ultralight rod and so, so, so simple that it's a very, very easy way to catch a lot of fish. And therein lies the beauty of it. So let's see if we can catch another one. We've already been catching them pretty good. And the lake we're at's got a lot of fish in it. And the reason we came here is because this is the type of place where you where we see a lot of guys throw power bait but they're not they're static fishing they're throwing it out and letting it sit and you can catch a lot of fish doing that don't get me wrong i'm not knocking that in any way shape or form but by turning your power bait effectively into a lure it gives me a chance to have the best of both worlds so i have a little scrap piece right here and i'm going to go ahead and pack it down good and tight And I'll get it how I, how I want it as far as my basic shape. I've got two colors right here. Then I'll take my little tiny hook, which is right here. And I'm gonna press it on to here. We'll cover the whole hook shank with it. And we, we figured out already today that they're size sensitive. So we, we're gonna be a little bit careful about the size of the baits we make. Uh, if we start getting fish that are really short striking a lot or anything like that, then I will go from there. But uh, at this point, it seems to me that they want the bait going relatively quickly and then stalled when they get up behind it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now I got my little ball. I like how it looks. Rinse the fingers off. And we'll see if we can catch another one real quick. Here we go. Throw it out here. Let it sink for just a second or two. And then retrieve it. And I'm just barely holding on to the rod and I just wait for the fish to come tight on it. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna do any big hook sets of any kind today. You're gonna notice that. Uh, we're just going to retrieve the bait and it seems like almost every time I get the bait brought into where I can see it right in front of me uh, is there'll be somebody following it and then I can just stall it and let them go. Now I didn't get a follower that time, but most of these we have been getting followers. 